Michaela, I guess first things first, what are you hearing ahead of the draft? Who have you spoken to? Which teams? What's the feedback that you've been, gotten, been getting? Can you just give us a general mm -hmm. overview? Yeah, so I've, over the last couple of weeks, I've got to talk to um, some coach, assistant coaches, um, some assistant GMs to, I think, for them to gauge kind of like personality, how I fit in um, off the court, and then also trying to analyze individually what I um, need to get better at as well as what my strengths are. Um, and just trying to get a feel for what those organizations are like. Uh, I'm not going to disclose uh, which team specifically, um, but I've talked to uh, three teams individually, and all my coaches have talked to different teams, and then my agents talk to teams as well. Um, I'm going to call my agent tomorrow just to kind of get a better feel for what to expect going into draft day, but uh, I've also talked to a couple of my teammates in the past who've gone through the draft process, Sydney Weiss and Marie Gulich, um, and they – uh, before the draft, they had called and talked to a couple teams, but then um, not those teams weren't necessarily the ones that drafted them. So it's it's not for especially if you're not like one of the top two, three, four picks. It's kind of unknown where you might go, and it's kind of a fluid process. What was, what was the best advice you got from your teammates who have been through this before? I the best advice I think was just enjoy the process and to not worry about where you're going. Um, just enjoy. Um, each day and then once you figure it out just be happy wherever you're wherever you're selected to go. Michaela, I know you had told a bunch of us that uh, if you were given the chance to come back you would have loved another year at Oregon State and that's not to take away from the excitement that's certainly coming your way but what was that process yeah. like of you know, having to realize okay I'm not coming back I'm not able to do that and now I need to refocus and focus on my professional career. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a tough transition for me. Um, I went from having a little bit of hope and a little bit of hope of potentially having another interstate tournament and being able to battle more with my Oregon State teammates. Um, but once I found out that um, it was like, it was almost false hope because there's so many logistical things that have had to gone down and uh, for everything to happen. So I wasn't like 100%, oh, I think this is gonna happen. I was just hoping. Um, and when that was shut down, we found that winter sports would not have extra eligibility. Um, it was time to turn the new chapter, and the following day, I actually uh, signed with an agent, um, Eric Wiesel, who happens to be Sid Wiesel's agent as well. Um, so that when I signed that paperwork, I was like, oh, man, there's no going back now. Um, this is it, and I'm no longer a college student. Hey, Mick, it's Steve. Uh, what was it that would make you want to come back for that other year? You had four really good years. I know it ended poorly, but you have a chance to go on. What was it that would want you that would make you want to come back, play another full year at Oregon State? Yeah, uh, one of my biggest goals at the start of the season, as well as um, going into the college career, was to make it to a Final Four and have a shot at national championship. And I wasn't able to do that. And you only get four years in college. Um, and so I wanted, if I got another shot to participate in that and and go for that opportunity, then I would have loved to do that. Because um, you can have a, a very long professional career, eight, 10 plus years, but you only got that small amount of time in college. Hey, Michaela. Um, hey. My question is, I'm wondering uh, how excited you are about the opportunity to play professionally. And how much of a dream was this for you to play in the WNBA? Yeah, um, this is, such an amazing opportunity uh, for me. It's kind of this WNBA draft week is kind of the culmination of um, my, my dreams as a little kid playing at recess in elementary school at Okites Elementary against the boys. Um, always wishing that you could play basketball forever. Um, I'm thankful that with NCAA tournament being canceled that I still have the opportunity to play basketball and, and will do so professionally. Um, so I'm excited that that opportunity is there for me and um, this is just an amazing uh, opportunity. I'm going to work as hard as I can to um, play as long as possible. Michaela, Paul Danzer, Portland Tribune, thank you for doing this. Where will yeah. you be on draft day and how will you spend, you know, the experience? Yeah, so I'm currently in Boise, Idaho. Uh, my sister goes to Boise State University, so I'm spending time with her. And also um, – her house is a little small, so we're going to go to a friend's house in um, Boise, who I played AAU with, um, and celebrate it there. Um, my parents won't be able to come because they're in Washington, and due to the mm -hmm. pandemic, they don't 
I think it's the best choice to come to Boise. Um, but they will be virtually there on the computer screens around for the virtual draft. Um, so they'll be in the room, be able to experience that with us um, and be there kind of in spirit. Um, but I'm super excited for it. I know my sister will be there. I'll be able to celebrate with some friends um, and just kind of see what happens. What's your emotion like? Are you nervous? Are you excited? I mean, Tim, where are you at in terms of that right now? Yeah, a little bit of everything. Uh, I'm super excited. But there, I'd be lying if I said there weren't any nerves um, because you don't know what to expect. Um, you you could go to this team, that team, the other team, um, so you don't exactly know. Um, and you, ha you obviously have certain places that you think would be dream scenarios, but you're super happy with whatever opportunity, whatever team um, makes the decision to add, their, add you to their organization. How do you think your game translates to WNBA, and what kind of feedback have you heard um, in terms of the way teams maybe see your game translating? Yeah. Uh, could you repeat that first part of the question? I got well, yeah, that. Just, um, yeah, I'm just wondering how you think your game will translate to the pros, and then maybe – some of the feedback you've gotten along those lines. Yeah, awesome. So I think that um, obviously my rebounding is what stands out. I think as a guard, I rebounding at that at the level. So they think I'll be one of the best rebounding guards um, possible. Um, like that will continue to maybe not the same numbers, probably not the same numbers, but it'll be um, as a guard something that I'm able to do really well. Um, and then being able to create for others and seeing the court, my vision is something that they've said is a positive. Um, and then things that I need to work on and continue to get better at in order to reach that next level. Um, change of pace to create more separation for my defender um, instead of relying on just overpowering or um, jumping over shorter defenders. Um, and then also a quick release on my shot uh, from three-point land. I have my mid-range game, I think is pretty solid, but just be able to um, have quicker alignment and quicker release um, from deep shooting wise. Great, thank you. Thanks, Paul. Hey, Mick, how's it going? I'm doing well. How about you? Good. Um, can you just kind of talk a little bit about now that you've, you know, like you said, have time to reflect? You know, kind of yeah. on the state program, it and you know where it was maybe compared to when you first got there. Or, you know how mm -hmm. it's set up for the future, just kind of based on the you guys there and I'm sure you know still very close with everyone there and the next leaders mm -hmm. of the mantle so to speak. Yeah um, so I'm excited for the future of Oregon State basketball. I came in um, they had just come off a final four run um, so unfortunately we we're not able to match that or go past that and that was a huge goal of mine going in. I um, felt like no this was this was an opportunity to do so um, but you know things happen and um, you should be ready to adapt but I think um, the future is bright. They have a good recruiting class come in, Sasha Goforth and Savannah Samuels. And then recently they had another commit, uh, Greta Kampschroeder, um, who um, is apparently very talented. I haven't seen her play, but I've heard good things about her. Um, and so they have a lot of guards coming in that should be ready to go. And then uh, obviously we have a lot of bigs. Um, Taya Hel Kit Taya Kors, but they will be a huge piece going forward. She'll be back and healthy next year. I'm not sure if Kennedy Brown will be ready, but um, she's a big, big bright spot for the future as well. And then obviously Taylor Jones coming off an amazing freshman year campaign. Hey Mick, uh, what's maybe the one or two biggest things that you, that you learned by coming to Oregon State? Um, how, mm -hmm. how that's helped you develop into the player that you are today and this opportunity you have this week? Yeah, I think coming into uh, Oregon State's 18 year old teenager, uh, definitely transitioning to young women. I've learned a lot of things, but some of the biggest takeaways on the court is seeing the um, seeing the floor differently um, and anticipating plays better than I did when I came in. So um, when I came in, learning how like why defenses shift certain ways, why certain plays are better in in certain scenarios against certain defenses. So being able to read and uh, anticipate what the other team's going to do. Um, and understanding the preparation it takes to go into this level in terms of understanding your opponent, what our game plan is, how to be ready to adapt once the other team starts making changes. Um, so just the game preparation mindset um, and I think basketball awareness um, and tactical um, parts of the game have really developed over the course of my time at Oregon State. And then off the court, uh, community-wise, and growing, um, I've grown in a huge way that in that aspect. Um, seeing great examples like Ken Johnson 
and Carolee Woodstock have helped inspire me to um, give back, and they've been great role models for me in the Corvallis community. Hey, Mick, uh, question about, hey. hey, hey, good to see you. You know, um, all of these mock, I've seen so many mock drafts. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. fascinating to look at. But then what I, I thought of something the other day when I looked at one recently, a couple of your mm -hmm. Team USA teammates are on the same list. Yeah. Talk about how that time mm -hmm. at Team USA last summer has helped you get ready for this Friday, because obviously that was yeah. a huge point for you. Yeah, so it's, it's cool seeing a lot of the teammates that played with this summer um, uh, that will be drafted in, in that conversation. Um, and then I think just playing that international sense of basketball um, with very talented players, you know, you're coming to a league that's extremely competitive and there's a lot of talented players all across the board. So um, it's just finding your role and finding how you, the way you can contribute in a positive way. And I think uh, Team USA was a great stepping stone and, and um beginning piece for me in that aspect in terms of you may not always be the dominant player, but you can surely find a, a key role and embrace that role uh, for your team. Do you, do you stay in contact with any of those players? Uh, yeah, I've texted, I text some of them more than others, um, but especially Brittany Brewer who played in Texas Tech. We were roommates um, during our training camp in Colorado Springs, so I probably communicated with her the most. All right. Thanks, Mick. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ron. Mm-hmm. Anybody else have any more questions? Yeah, I've got one more. Oh, we who did does, ask one. Yeah. Who, well, who does the cooking between you and Malia over there in Boise, and who's the better cook? Mm -hmm. Ooh, if you ask her, you may get a different answer. Uh, but I'd say I like my cooking better. So I think I have a, a wider range of uh, cooking skills. My repertoire is more expansive. Um, but uh, if you have any recipes, please send them my way. Uh, during this time, I'd like to try them out. You bet. Hey, Michaela, I don't know if, if this was asked um, a little while ago, but I was wondering mm -hmm. about um, off the court and um, your willingness to want to help others and um, hospital mm -hmm. workers. Um, can you just tell me a little bit about what you, what you were doing, why you decided, oh. what inspired you, all of that good stuff? Yeah. Um, so... I did that diary for the Oregon Live, um, and part of it was uh, kind of a final reflection, and so part of it, I wanted to include what I'm doing next and kind of what my next steps are. Um, so last term, I did a school project on providing healthy meals to healthcare physicians and um, healthcare personnel because physician burnout is a key issue, um, and with the emerging COVID crisis and pandemic, um, that's additional stress placed on these healthcare professionals. Um, and there's a volunteer base and people at home right now that have the opportunity to help and can help in ways that are even non-contact. Um, so um, I try to think of a way that I could reach out to the community and ask for their ideas and ask for input and help. Um, and so I sent that uh, email address in the bottom of the link and I got some really awesome responses and I continue. I got a couple today about, hey, can I donate uh, money? Can I donate to food delivery trucks? Can I uh, cook food? Um, so over the past week, I've, a group of um, research organizations and then a professor have reached out and called local res restaurants as well as hospitals to kind of set up the logistics. And then once we have that set down, then we'll start using the donation money to um, either provide uh, cooked meals from small restaurants to um, hospitals. And then also hopefully with donations, food donations we get, have local um, individuals cook meals or scones or muffins and then have uh, del delivery drivers deliver those to the hospitals. Um, so that's what we have in mind and we're open to get that um, rolling as soon as possible. That's awesome. Thanks, Michaela. Okay, thank you. Anyone have anything else before uh, we let everybody go? A uh, quick thing off of that. So, Michaela, you said you were starting to do that last semester, like well before any of this really started. What was yeah. your what was your heart behind that? Yeah, so I was a class that was about um, innovation and skill building and using uh, team development across different disciplines. So 
So we started brainstorming and thinking about things you're passionate about. So I was passionate about healthcare, one, and then um, cooking and baking as well. So I was trying to figure out how to tie those together. And so last term, we um, took post-it notes, really big post-it notes, and put them at different hospitals before COVID went down and tried to get ideas in terms of what healthcare professionals would want for lunch and um, what kind of ways they could be supported um, food-wise. Uh, so that was kind of an initial spark. Then as this started escalating more and more, I'm like, well, I think um, that would be a good time to have like bring people together because they're concerned and they're and they want to help. Um, and so that'd be a good timing. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. All right. Anything else before we go? Thanks, Michaela. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Hey, thank you guys. Good luck. Have a good one. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, everybody. Bye.